Well, well with a, a neat coaching regime, how, how does it change and how you what players you're looking for in, in evaluating and things like that? I don't think it. I don't think it changes. We're we're always looking for better football players. There might be some tweaks on things that we're looking for, but at the end of the day, as Jerry said the other day, we organizationally set the the standard for what we're looking for player wise, and we got coaches that will be able to put them in the right spot. What did you think when they, you found out Mike McCarthy was in fact going to be the guy? Um, there was sadness at first because we spent a bunch of time with those coaches that are there. It's a cutthroat business, and that's the way it is. And value those guys but now it's another opportunity for us to grow we've been doing the same things for a long time and and, and now we have an opportunity to continue to grow and hopefully get better I think, the thing people are curious about though is i get it, i mean you're still looking for good players but this, these new coaches are going to have different ideas of what they want to do with, with their football team right and the type of players they need Absolutely, but at the end of the day, we're going to stay within the same scheme, um, and we're going to do things a little bit different. So our job is to go and evaluate all the players. They might want bigger interior players, so that's fine. We'll go and look for that. Um, but I think we're going to be looking for the same type players. Is it pretty daunting when you look at all of the impending agents on the defensive side of the ball and how it piece together this, this offseason? Every year is a challenge when you go through that. You know, it's the way the NFL is made. You got the salary cap. You can't keep everybody. So we go through and we find out what's valuable for us, uh, who will fit within our parameters, and then we want to try and fill the holes in free agency and draft free. What did Byron, what's Byron value? Uh, he's a starting caliber, you know, NFL corner. He's a really good player, and we have to figure out his financial value and if it fits for us. How does the new coaching staff factor into the existing personnel, whether it's Byron, whether it's somebody else? sitting down with them and getting a feel for how they feel about these guys. I think it's, it's, it's always good to get an outside, you know, and they weren't with us and didn't know how we did things, so to get their opinion on our players and match it with our pro department and what we think of them and then, you know, how they can use guys. So we've got to understand, you know, how they want to use guys and the value of different positions. It's, some of that changes. Y'all have reiterated throughout that Dak is your long-term quarterback answer, but he doesn't have a contract yet or an extension. For you, what does that mean in terms of your evaluations and how you're planning for 2020? Um, we expect Dak to be our quarterback. If the owner GM says we're going to get it done, he signs the check, so we'll get that done. And we're excited about it, and we realize the value of him as a player. But we've got to go, and we've got to evaluate that because you're never one player away, and we want to improve the position at all points. And so we'll look at that throughout the draft process. What do you remember most about him four years ago? He was here. Uh, what do you remember most about him being at the Senior Bowl? Does anything stand out at all to you? Yeah, just as, you know, his leadership. And, and every year you come and you see all these different kids that come from different places and you try and get a feel for who they are. It's our first opportunity to get in front of them and talk to them ourselves. But when we were on the field with him, there was this guy that was always leading his group. And it, it just showed, when you know, when he was with us. But um, the way that he competed in this game showed you a lot about him. You hear Mike McCarthy, you think West Coast offense. You hear Mike going, some of you might think 3-4, but it sounds like they're pretty flexible and want to play multiple uh, defenses and stuff. I mean, does that help you as uh, kind of building a roster where, hey, these coaches are adaptable? Where Yes, I mean, they're football coaches, and uh, they've had success in this league for a long time. They've been through a number of different things. They have the things that they like, and um, so it is exciting to say that, we have systems we feel like that you can take players and both of them have said we'll find if you got a good player we'll find what we can do with them within our scheme you mentioned the new voices the staff. how important is it to have some new coaches with players like i think it's a part of building a team and you have some of those guys that have been around that kind of know the intricacies of our players that know our players know what we've done so i think it helps the new staff acclimate themselves to the players that we do have Um, I think every coach, uh, every coach knows something about players. They have a feel for what they're looking for, uh, and our process is inclusive. And we want to get everybody together and hear everybody's opinion. At the end of the day, Jerry makes the decision, but coaches have input. The scouts have input. That's why we feel like our process is very good because anybody that's been around them that knows more about them and then knows what they're putting them into. If you pull all that stuff together, we got a chance to build a good team. 
what to you is Kellen's value to the organization and what's the potential for merging what he's done on offense with what McCarthy wants to do? Kellen? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I think he's, uh, you know, one of those bright minds. And like Coach McCarthy said, when he was looking, you know, sitting out and looking around at guys that he wanted to have around him, he talked about Kellen. So I think that Kellen's ingenuity and some of the things that he's done on offense and the way that he has a feel for our players and what Dak does, I think you add that to McCarthy's scheme. I think there's a number of different things that we can do. Jerry mentioned in Mike's intro press here that one of the things that stood out in the job interview was Mike's appreciation for Dak and how he broke that down. What were some of those conversations they all are discussing? I mean, it's just the number one thing is the quarterback position being a leader, somebody that brings guys with him. The, the, the number of things that you can do on the pro uh, side that, some, that, you know, some of the college influences that are coming in, Dak can do that, as well as just watching him grow and compete in every, you know, in every opportunity. I think that's what Coach McCarthy was really most excited about. I mean, I think it's, it's going to be a tough deal. Again, it's the NFL. You have your quarterback you have to pay. You have a receiver. You have good players. And when you have good players, you have to figure out how to pay them or how to survive. So that's what we do in the front office is try and figure out how to work those contracts and get the best possible team with those guys. And so we've got to go through that whole process. Are there not a lot of teams deal less with salary cap restrictions when it comes to those sorts of decisions or cash budget type of things? Is that something that you guys have to factor here? Is it probably less so here than maybe other places? I think it's less so here, the whole cash thing. I mean, it's we all have to manage the cap and how we do that. That's the biggest issue. Jerry was saying, and Steven said, they felt the roster was talented enough, that you all had built a roster talented enough to contend for a Super Bowl. How disappointing was last year for you guys? Every team's talented. Every opportunity's a chance. And I think that, you know, we talk about the talent that we had. If it... You know, if we don't get to where we're going, that talent's not good enough, and we have to keep trying to get that better. The execution uh, and the use of the talent and all those things we have to get better at. But I think we're going to try and build a strong team with depth and looking for those positions that make impact, you know, on the roster, and we need our impact players to make impact plays. Where's Leighton, his recovery, and how much do you factor uncertainty about his health into your evaluation of the linebacker position this offseason? You know, we're expecting Leighton to be back and ready to go when we start camp, and, you know, we're rolling with that process. Guys like Sean Lee and Jason Witten, how do you value their leadership, but also probably guys want some young, fresh blood too? Yeah, I mean, leadership is key. Um, you know, finding those guys that can help transition and they have that, you know, they, those guys have things that talking to his coaching staff that they value as the leadership, their understanding of the game, all those things. Uh, you just have to make the decisions and the players have to make the decisions as to where they want to be and all that stuff. But you always want good football players on your team. Well, we need to continue to get playmakers. You gotta, you know, you gotta win on first and second down to get to third down. And you gotta win on third down. So it's the mix of those players, and you know, Demarcus is the key to that because he's ours. He's our bell cow, and we feel really good about that. But we want to keep adding guys to that position. How would you assess your trade for Quinn, and what's your goal for him this coming season? Is both come back? Robert Quinn did a great job for us. I mean, you know, getting him in and adding that pass rush, and his production was great. And you know, he learned from Marinelli and kind of fit into the group. Um, but every year it's a challenge. I don't know what's out there right now and what we can do, but we're going to evaluate all and find a way to put the team together the best that we can. I, Tristan Hill was who's viewed as a development player when y'all drafted him in the first place. With the full season under his belt, highs and lows, how do you feel about where he is right now? I think he's going to be better this year than he was last year. And you know what we try and do is when you draft the player, you're projecting. Uh, then you put him in the actual deal and you see where they go when you watch him grow. He has all the talent, you know, speaking with a new defensive line coach and, um, you know, him watching him and he watched him in college and there's some promise and hope for him. And I've seen him grow. And that's the big thing is you want to see them grow from year one to year two. Were you surprised? Did, did, Jerry, did you have much say in McCarthy or was that just a Jerry and Steven decision? Did they bounce? Different coaches we talked about a lot of things, and it was a Jerry and Steven decision. But you know, we, we I had an opportunity to know things about certain guys and, and and have a part in the process, and that was important. Were you surprised to see the Giants hired Jason, and what will it be like seeing him on the other side? Jason's a, a great, excuse me. He's a great football coach and a good friend, and so excuse me, ugh, <laughs> not all choked up over <laughs> Um But he's a good football coach um 
he's a good man, and they've got you know a guy that that's going to do a good job for them. And he's going to compete, and he's going to want to beat the Cowboys, and we're going to want to give it to the Giants. How do you assess where you guys are at at safety? Um, again, I think it's it's a developing position. Uh, I don't think we're the greatest. I don't think we're the worst. We're going to try and continue to improve that spot, just like every other spot. And you have so many spots on the roster that if you go to offseason thinking you need to have some clarity there and do some things to address. Is there a priority, a system to prioritize which which positions are the most important to you guys as an organization, where maybe safety is more important to you guys in other buildings, or maybe less important? No, I mean, I think we have to, again, understand what we're doing uh, schematically and what, where can we get the most impact for the buck. Um, and, you know, you can't have a good secondary if you don't have a good line. You can't have a good line if you don't have a good secondary. So all those things go into putting a team together. There's no picture framework way to do it. I think the uh, way to do it is to evaluate the guys the right way, give them the right value, be that in free agency or in the draft, and you pick them right, and then you coach them and we get a chance to see when you look at how often Dak used his legs last year, do you think he could and should be using him, or would you like to see that? I mean, that's a schematic thing. That's on coaches. I, I, I want Dak to have success, and I want to build a team where he has an opportunity to have success. I think um, Coach McCarthy's got some plans to do some things, and we'll get to see all of Dak's capabilities, I think.